buenos dias. This is Kai Pacha with the Weekly Pele Report. And here I am back in my front yard here, Costa Rica. This is my one and only coffee plant. See those coffee beans? <laughs> yeah. It is now September 30th, 2015. This is an astrological report about what the heck is going on on planet Earth from the point and perspective of astrology. So, uh, you know, today is Wednesday. Sun is conjunct Mercury, or I should say Mercury going retrograde is conjunct the Sun, yeah. Uh, and uh, the Moon is in the sign of Taurus. Thursday, tomorrow, she is going to be moving into Gemini until finally on Saturday. She's going to go into Cancer, and we are going to have the third quarter square moon. Cancer to Libra. The sun is in Libra. Moon is in Cancer. And beyond that, the sun is opposite Uranus and the moon is opposite Pluto. If you look at the chart that I have uh, just before, you want to pause it on that chart. It is called a grand square. Yeah, it's a T-square going on right now with these uh, four <laughs> celestial objects, the Sun, the Moon, Uranus, and Pluto. Very intense weekend going on all Saturday and Sunday. We can expect some real uh, issues coming to the foreground at that time. Yeah. In addition, I'm going to just say that Mars, you know, is still square Saturn. And it's going to be square Saturn all week. Venus is also now squaring Saturn. And that is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter, you know, up through October 10th. And, you know, it's just <laughs> Saturn is in square to Neptune. I mean, we got all, we got some real stuff going on. I'd say, you know, the, the only, you know, real sweet thing here now is that uh, Jupiter is in this nice, beautiful trine with Pluto, which is just Jupiter is a lot and Pluto is transformation. Yeah. So that's what we're getting now is a lot of transformation. Let me look at the camera and explain a little bit more about what all that astrology means. Talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah, just out here in the backyard. I just didn't feel like going anywhere. I've been on the road for a while. It's nice to be home and uh, too much catching up to do. I'm sure you are busy too. These are busy days. All this, like I, I've been talking about it, it's going to be going on. I'm going to be, I hate to be repeating myself, but you know, we're going to be having this Jupiter in Virgo opposite Chiron and Neptune in Pisces squaring Saturn in Sagittarius for the next nine months you know it's just like and and it is just about having a lot of work a lot of sacrifice a lot of service a need to be clear a need to decide a near to a need to just like get our act together and this is personally and this is globally yeah and it is not an easy time like i said this 2016 starting now is the year of purification and that purification means to get rid of all the foul nasty disease and hate and guck and goop and ugh. And a lot of it is around relationship and partnership right now. Let's face it. You know, we got the sun moving here through Libra, joining with this retrograde Mercury in Libra, black moon Lilith in Libra, north node of the moon in Libra, squaring. You know, now we got the sun coming into this square with Pluto. Super intense emotional dynamics going on. And then this weekend, the moon comes around through Cancer. And it opposes that Pluto, squares the sun, squares Uranus. And this is just, a, it's a very explosive time. And it's a time to be really clear. And so here we have all of this discrimination, Virgo, keyword for Virgo, discriminate and discern what is healthy for you, what is good for you, and what is not, and get what is not out of your life, out of your system, out of your body, and, you know, 
that's what this sun mercury square in this whole grand square going on is really all about sun mercury is communicate i need to communicate and i may need to re-communicate like maybe something you said a few weeks ago didn't sink in or wasn't clear enough and now you need to come back with a little more emotion a little more power a little more strength and say it again a little more clearly without losing your head yeah uh, but at the same time pluto brings in this deep you know you know root chakra energy kundalini it's anger there's a lot of anger going on this mars squaring saturn is just like i have had enough so if anything, it's like really challenging to stay cool, calm, and collected these days when there is this sense, you know, like we're getting overwhelmed with so much work, with so much, you know, stimulation, with so much, and what is it? It's, I would say, bad news. Bad news. I mean, I was just listening to Putin's uh, speech to the United Nations you know, and looking at these four million refugees. I mean, it's like, you know what? S Sagittarius, you know, rules mass migrations of people. And now, no sooner does Saturn go into Sagittarius than we're having these refugee crises. And I'll tell you what, this could go on for the next couple of years. And it also is not only migrations of people, it's religion. It's this whole foreign lands, multicultural integration, and the need to assimilate new... It's like Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter is incorporating foreign ideas, foreign religions, foreign philosophies, new ways of looking at the world, new belief systems. Hello? This is like the perfect, it's like, you know what, you know, Europe and, you know, the whole Western world, you know, it's time to integrate this Muslim influence and to like work out and face and confront our ideological differences. This is Saturn in Sagittarius bringing up religion, beliefs, philosophical, you know, uh, approaches and meanings to life, squaring Jupiter in Virgo, which is like, figure it, calculate it, analyze it, use your left brain and really like, you know, what makes sense for you and what doesn't. And so it's this whole multicultural, you know, integration that can happen either smoothly or with tremendous amounts of resistance. And this is the problem. Sat, you know, Saturn can be very fixed and formed and fundamental and structured and I am not budging from my beliefs and I am not budging from you know I don't want I don't you know it's like you know it can be boundaries like I don't want new ideas and I don't want a new belief and I don't want to expand my consciousness thank you very much <laughs> I'm happy right with what the way that I think everything is is just the way that it is and I can you know that's the downside the shadow of Sagittarius you know it's just my opinion is the ultimate truth you know what I believe is right so we're having a clash yeah and this Mars coming around to square Saturn is this clash of ideals, of religions, and these religions are beliefs and it's ways of life. So this is like the world picture and we're going to be dealing with this and of course, you know, Saturn is square Neptune for the next, you know, 9, 10, 11 months, practically a whole year of Saturn squaring Neptune. And again, you know, this has to do, uh, you know, Neptune has to do with confusion and dissolving the old it's like there's 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 no ground to stand on there's no home there's no security there's nothing solid neptune and pisces is like you know really so these are really super challenging times and all i can say is these we could say these are dark times especially from now till december this is like you know this is like really as saturn moves closer and closer and closer to that square to neptune you know the the situation is going to get darker and darker and darker and what does that mean hello we have to be the light you have to be the light i have to be the light if you're in a dark room you turn the light on yeah 
<laughs> you know, I mean, it's like this is a time where each one of us, you know, if you're a light worker or a light bearer or you see yourself, you know, as some kind of, you know, new ager, new paradigmer, you know, revolutionary. Well, this is the time to find and to hold and to maintain and to keep that light within and to be guided in your communications and to be clear in your relationships and to practice. It's like now we get to practice at a deeper level or at a higher level or with more intense surroundings. You know, like the darkness wants to encroach upon the light. Well, now is the time to like be the light and not be encroached upon, not go into depression, not be overwhelmed, not sleep all day or hide out or, you know, retreat or, you know, try to, uh, you know, get out from under the weight or whatever. Abs no, no, no. Actually, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man. It's time. You got to get up, stand up for your rights. You got to get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Yeah. You know, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. It's not just a song, you know. It's a, it's a mirror of a reality that we're in right now. And I want to talk a little bit about this mantra. I'm going to bring this mantra in a little early because it's got some stuff to it. And doggone it, I better remember it this time. It is... When making important decisions, I need to calm my mind by breathing long and slow and deep and surrendering to the divine. And I bring it up now because I want to talk about it a little, bit, a little bit now because I really feel like there is, there are some misunderstandings around the word surrender. It, you know, when we think of surrender, we think of white flags, okay? We think of giving up like we have lost the war or we've lost the battle or we've lost something. So there is this association, I think, that, we, you know, that many people make you know, that we make as human beings associating surrender with loss. And this does not necessarily need to be the case because let's look at it once. When I say that, you know, we, I need to surrender to the divine, it may be that the divine Okay, my intuition, my inspiration, my angels or my guides or the ascended masters, okay, they're telling me, okay, you know, that I need to have a very firm, strong conversation with this person and lay out a boundary and create space for myself so that I feel safe, calm, and relaxed. But I could be afraid of confrontation. I don't want to alienate this person. I don't want them to get angry at me. I don't want them to maybe like come back and try to hurt me. So in that type of a situation, if I am to surrender to the divine, I am to surrender my fear and actually step into my power, into my warrior, and have a difficult conversation or send a hard, you know, a hard-nosed email or like draw a line or talk to the lawyer or, you know, whatever it takes in this particular relationship, in this particular situation. So in this case, surrendering to my guidance or surrendering to the divine, you know, that is within me, you know, does not necessarily involve losing anything. In fact, it means expanding my power base, expanding my consciousness, expanding my magnetic field. Yeah? So don't mistake surrender with, oh, I'm supposed to lay down like a little sheep and be slaughtered. 
Okay, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. It means that I need to like really do my meditations. I need to really calm my mind. So it's not my ego. It's not my parents. It's not my inner critic. It's not my inner judge. It's not my super ego. It's not coming from my mind. It's coming, okay, from the collective unconscious or from my personal soul, evolutionary intention. And that's what I surrender to. I don't surrender to my fear. I don't surrender to my past. Yeah, and I don't necessarily lose anything. I mean, it, it may involve, sometimes, yeah, sometimes, you know, the divine may say, let go of that situation. Move on or get out of that condition. And you could, you could register that as a loss. Oh, well, that means I'm losing my situation. <laughs> or, you know, you could be like, oh, well, you know, it's like, uh, you know, the pioneers that, you know, went from the East Coast and settled the, you know, settled the West or whatever. It's like, yes, I am losing this situation. But you can also look at it as, you know what, the future is opening up for me. And I am, you know, freer to create a more bounteous, bountiful, expansive future. So it's, this is all attitude. This is all Mercury. We've got this Mercury retrograde. It's time to reflect on these things. It's time to reflect on just, you know, how I am looking at the world and interpreting my reality. And we interpret our realities by what we believe. And you can have some unconscious beliefs. And, and these, as they are made conscious, yes? You know, I may have some unconscious belief that there's not enough. It's been hammered into so many of us, okay, for thousands of years. There's not enough food, there's not enough money, there's not enough resources, there's not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. And it just creates an inner state of paranoia and selfish interest, yeah, and greed that, oh my God, if there's not enough, I better get mine first or before it runs out. And of course, that, you know, that belief has created all kinds of shit, yeah, that we're all dealing with on, on political, financial, personal, relationship, emotional, sexual. It's just like we're all like in this state of like, <gasps> there's not enough, there's not enough. <laughs> No wonder everything gets so fucked up. <laughs> oh, God. You know, if everybody's just like, whew. And so this is the other thing, you know. It's funny because I got this email that said, you know what, I should do a yoga pose, you know, with each Pele report along with my mantra, or I should, you know, do, you know I, I could do more with these Pele reports and stuff like that. But today I'd like you to just join me very briefly. I do this in all my workshops. I start all of my talks with alternate nostril breathing. I want to do a little bit of that right now because it totally relates to the mantra. You can do this while you're driving. You can do it at a stoplight and not while you're driving, but you know, while you're sitting at a stoplight. <laughs> well, I've done it while I'm driving, but it's good to close your eyes, you know. But uh, anyway, the way that it works for me and, and the way that, you know, Yogi Bhajan teaches it with Kundalini Yoga, Pranayama is ready and close your eyes. Close your eyes. Put your index finger and your fourth finger right on your third eye. Close your right nostril with your thumb. Inhale through the left nostril. Close the left nostril with the fourth finger. Exhale through the right nostril. Slowly inhale through the right nostril. The slower you can do this, the better. Close it, exhale through the left and go back and forth and back and forth at least 10 times as slow as you can. And this is a beautiful way of calming your mind. It balances the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Yeah, 
and really brings you into a state of equanimity and the slower and the deeper you can do that breath. So when you find yourself flipping out or freaking out or you're overwhelmed or you're overstimulated, you know, or somebody's got you pissed off, you know, and you're in the middle, you know, you're going to send that nasty email or whatever, you know, it's just like, just do that alternate nostril breathing, do it 10 breaths, just 10 breaths, and it will, it will bring you, you know, you know, well, it will bring you to a state, obviously, the more often you meditate, and the more often you do your yoga and your, you know, you have your spiritual practice, it will bring you to a state that you are familiar with from your meditative practice. So the more you meditate, the faster you can get to that state of equilibrium. So if you don't meditate, you can do this alternate nostril breathing, but it's not going to get you to the center as fast as if you meditate regularly and you're familiar with that home base, you're familiar with that center, like you've built a little hut on the other side of the river, then you're just going to that hut. If you haven't built your hut on the other side of the river, <laughs> you know, then it's, not, it's like you don't really have a familiar spiritual identity to center yourself within. So I'm also obviously a proponent of meditation and yoga practices. And of course, you, you, you can download them for free off my website. I've got videos that you can purchase if you want to do the meditations. But yeah, there you can just do the, get the PDF files of meditations and things like that right off of my website, you know, for nothing. Yeah? And, and it's really going to be good and it's really going to be necessary in some way, shapes, and forms for, you know, the, you know the, these times that we are entering, that we are in, okay, and facing what we need to face and doing what we need to do in order to be the seed people for a new paradigm. Yeah? So, uh, that's probably enough for today. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me do that uh, parche. Got the cat crawling up my leg here. Uh, let's try to remember that mantra one more time, just for the record. <laughs> Ow! <sighs> when making important decisions, I need to calm my mind by breathing long, no, by breathing slow and deep and long and surrendering to the divine. Namaste, aloha, so much love. Mm -hmm.